All right, we're going to take a look at uh, this building an AK-47, or in this particular case, an AK-74, and we're taking a look at a Bulgarian parts kit, some receivers, and some miscellaneous parts, and we'll be delving in with this video and others on putting together or building or assembling this AK-74 from a kit into a rifle. So first off, let's start with some of the basics. Uh, what is a firearm? On this table, there's actually two firearms right now, and that's these. These are receivers, but in the eyes of the U.S. firearms law, this is the part that the that is the firearm. There's a serial number on each of these, and these were created by a manufacturer, serialized, sold through a, a FFL dealer or a gun shop, purchased, and now they are firearms, even though they can't shoot a bullet and they don't really look like anything. We'll get into more of that, but that's where we're going to start from, is the law. What is a firearm? A firearm is a, is a part of a machine that eventually is designed to fire bullets. So this was a firearm at one time. It was an AK-74 or a AK-47 chambered in 545 by 39, which is, let's just say, the Soviet equivalent of the 223. That designates an AK-74. Uh, and more specifically a Bulgarian AK-74, even more specifically a triangle side folder variant of the Bulgarian AK-74. So at one time this was a rifle, it had a part very similar to this, uh, kind of here, and all these other parts were either inside of it or attached to it, because it's sort of the backbone of a firearm, that's why it gets designated as the actual part that is the firearm. But since that firearm cannot be imported per the 1934 and amended by the 1968 federal firearms legislation, because it meets too many requirements that bring it out of a sporting use criteria, in other words, it's too military looking or styled to be imported, so they had options. One, the options they chose to pursue is to chop the receiver off of the firearm, so the receiver that would normally look like this, ended up looking something like this which is you can see the basic shell is still there it's nothing more than a an elaborate metal taco such that it was cut into the designated uh, parts and in the designated process so that it's no longer a firearm anymore and then the parts that were attached to it are no longer parts of a firearm now this parts kit can be imported like any other bunch of material, a bunch of metal. So these are purchased and then reassembled here as a firearm and that's a project that has been fairly difficult or at least required some amount of knowledge but more recently has become less difficult and that's what we're going to explore in a series of videos. So we're going to talk about parts kits more specifically and open up some parts kits in a series of videos but in this video uh, we're kind of doing the the summary of the whole thing. So now we know what a firearm is and that we are able to take a parts kit and remanufacture it into a firearm. We don't need any kind of licensing to do that. Uh, we can choose to use a serialized receiver for that or we can choose other options. Here's some of this. Let's start somewhere. Let's start with these. These are flats. So these are pieces of metal before they're folded that would eventually look like this. Uh, if we hold it up here, you can see there's the rear hole for one of the buttons on the stock, the selector or the safety switch, the pins for the trigger and hammer, the dimple is the magazine well, underneath the sticker is the other magazine well. We can see the holes up front for the stock to attach, uh, the, again, holes for the uh, pin or the rivets that hold it together, the dimple, uh, you can see the X and Y on this one. Not so easy to see on this finished receiver. And then we've got the holes in the back again for the folding stock. And then even the cutouts. You can see that cutout for again the folding stock for this particular model of AK. So that's a flat. That would need to be bent into the channel or the shape of the taco. Then the side rails uh, that we can see here would need to be installed. And those are typically spot welded. This particular flat you can see comes packaged with the rails. Another option 
would be to start with something like this, which is the metal channel, but it doesn't have any of the interior stuff, no rails and no center support. It also doesn't have any holes drilled in it. And again, because this is the receiver, this is the part that, the, that is the firearm, and this is a finished product started with some raw materials, again, there has to be a definition, a, a line in the sand drawn, and this folded channel without any holes, or this flat piece of material with holes but no folded channel, both walk right up to the line but don't cross the line to become an actual receiver. They are what's called an 80% or a 60% or depends who's selling it to you, what they're going to call it, but uh, pre-made, pre uh, not completed receiver, which Another option here, less common and less useful, is uh, what I would I think was called a 60%. Again, these are very difficult to assemble, So, uh, but again, they show you the, another option. It's a channel with no stampings, no holes, no anything, but it gets you started if you don't have the machinery to, to do the bending of the flat receiver, which does require some amount of tools and knowledge. So one way to start out would be to start with some sort of a pre-made receiver that's not completed and then complete it into the final receiver yourself. Uh, the main reason for that is cost. This is typically going to cost anywhere from $100 to $300 depending on uh, buying conditions and supply where the flats are typically going to cost somewhere between $30 and $60 or the 80% receivers are going to cost well under $100 and require some additional tooling and skill, these would not have any serial numbers on them because you're actually manufacturing the firearm, where these have um, serial numbers and are purchased through dealers because although they're not complete rifles, they are firearms as we talked about earlier. So there's some disadvantages and, and advantages to either of those paths. haven't quite decided what I'm going to do with this one. I'm probably going to start out with a receiver uh, just so that there's, I reduce some headaches because I'm not challenging myself to see if building a receiver is any easier since uh, that's pretty much still done the same way as it was when I built years ago. Uh, it's actually the other parts of building where uh, taking a look at this empty one and this one that's been chopped up, we can see how the front trunnion, in other words this piece that holds the barrel inside and you know, it holds the barrel inside and on the outside it's where the, it meets the receiver and basically it's what holds the receiver to the barrel and holds that strong and true. It's basically the backbone of the uh, rifle and we can see when they're imported uh, they're riveted, the, the receiver is riveted to that front trunnion and that process uh, used to require uh, the knowledge of how to rivet and the tools to rivet, uh, either an air hammer or something of the like, some sort of tooling or jigs in order to hold the either the, the buck side or the front side of your rivet. Uh, so we're going to explore some options on how to get those rivets back on. The trigger guard, which is riveted to the bottom of the receiver, like this, also uses rivets. And again, that was typically a process of some sort of a jig to hold your rivets underneath and then some sort of a system to uh, hammer the rivets down on the back and again there's new tooling available for that we're going to explore that and then uh, the putting the stock onto the back of the receiver you can see again where there's going to be three rivets on each side so get that in there. there's going to be three rivets on each side uh, again those are going to be done with a new tool instead of an anvil and a sledgehammer so in order to, to work on those aspects of building and to see if that's bringing it, uh, building an AK-47 closer to assembling, uh, we're going to uh, start with a parts kit that you may notice has a raw metal or a brand new, this happens to be a U.S. made barrel uh, installed in it. And I got this one from Arms of America. Their gunsmith does the work of installing all the stuff onto the new U.S. barrel as well as getting out your headspace and then removing your barrel pin. And we'll talk about these in depth in other videos, but to explain the, 
overall process here. We'll start with a receiver, we'll rivet that to the front trunnion, we'll put the barrel back on, uh, put the uh, barrel nut or the barrel pin back in, then we'll uh, put on the trigger guard, the rear trunnion, and then it's just a matter of assembling the AK. So we're going to be testing out the tools and the process to do that assembly work. Once we've got that built, we'll have to keep in mind something called 922R. And like we talked about, this rifle was taken down into its component parts for importation because of the non-sporting configuration it was in. Because of the clause 922R, uh, you cannot reassemble a rifle into a uh, configuration that would not be legal to import. So because of that, if we want to use something like, well in this case we'll be using the triangle side folding stock, but if we wanted to alter course, use a standard receiver instead of the folding stock receiver, and install uh, the, actually the uh, plum style stock uh, that it would be foreign made, or perhaps the wooden style AK, Bulgarian AK-74 stocks, and again, that would um, be a foreign part. So we'd have to be aware of 922R. So in this case, if we want to have the option to use our foreign or our original parts, we need to look at the list. So we're going to have, in this case, starting with that Arms of America build, we're going to have the U.S. barrel, and I like that to some extent, and I don't like it to some extent. Obviously, we'd like to have the original barrels, but since those aren't imported anymore because of uh, reinterpretation of existing law by the ATF a few years back, the U.S. barrel is our only option, but it's a hidden option at least. So while it may affect uh, its original shooting ability or uh, tendencies to some extent, uh, overall looks going to be the exact same, and in this case, 922R, we're going to have a U.S. part that's hidden from all practical purposes. Then we'll have, of course, a U.S. made receiver. So that's another U.S. made part. So now we're up to two. On this one, if we want to keep our break, we're going to need six. Now we're going to want to keep our uh, foreign stock, of course. That's the appeal of this particular model. Uh, if I've done the research correctly or if I've figured out the history of these right, this is going to be an early AK-74 made in Bulgaria, but with Russian plum furniture and a Russian uh, smooth uh, triangle side folder. So there weren't a heck of a lot of these made uh, if this wasn't just thrown together. But again, we're still doing the research and that kind of stuff. But in any case, we've got one U.S. part here with the receiver, another U.S. part with the barrel. Then we're going to use a Tapco trigger, and that will give us three U.S. parts. So now we're up to five U.S. parts. And the best thing I've found to do uh, is to change the gas piston. So here we have the carrier and the bolt, and then the gas piston, which counts as a 922R part. Just to make it easier, I'll show you. This is a gas piston that was removed from another rifle, because I almost always make this conversion. It's, it's a hidden conversion, and it's fairly uh, economical. You replace the gas piston with this one that says made in the U.S. So a uh, U.S. made part that again is inside the gas tube the whole time, uh, you never see it, and uh, brings us up to the six so we can leave on our foreign muzzle brake. So this should be a pretty interesting build, uh, just to finish up the overall look here for a quick demo. It'll end up looking something like that, with the uh, side folder, be a nice plum Bulgarian AK-74s always look kind of cool compared to most uh, other rifles out there. And uh, again, with the excuse me, with the 922R compliant parts hidden for the most part inside, we'll be able to have some fun with changing out the stocks and the uh, grips. Some other things we'll be taking a look at are comparisons of some rivet kits. Since builders like to keep their rifles as original as possible, manufacturers have met the demand with lots of different rivet sets that are specific to each rifle. We'll take a look at those. Uh, some of the other options, such as ways to uh, keep your pins in order. There's lots of different options out there, and we'll explore some of those. We'll also take a look at some spring upgrade kits like this one from Tactical Response. 
So that's uh, touching on some of the aspects of building an AK-47, or again, in this case, an AK-74. Uh, we'll be taking a look in much greater detail uh, in future videos and others in this series. And of course, we'll be talking about the bayonets that go with them. If you have any questions, let us know below. Um, as always, thanks for watching. The guys and gals of GunWebsites.com encourage you to take a CCW class every year, practice at least once a month, and carry every day. Thanks for watching GunWebsites.com.